Hey guys, Matt from Evolve Fitness and I've got Dr. Sapphire back here again um, to talk about regenerative medicine. So, over to you, buddy. Okay, well, we're talking about regenerative medicine today and it's something which is something I'm very passionate about. Um, it is, um, uh, you know, how when we are born to the day we die, we start degenerating. So, we, the, our, our joints, our ligaments, our, our bones, our muscles are degenerating as we, as we get older. Um, our collagen on the face is degenerating. So anything that recreates collagen, cartilage, recreates the ligaments, the tendons back to how they used to be, yeah. it's called regenerative. Um, so we, we are recreating the tissue. So it's very, very new concept. It's a, it's, it's a new branch of medicine, I think. Yeah, okay. So is that like, um, is that anything to do with like um, ATP? Actually, yes, ATP is a big part of um, um, you know, you know, energy production, and you need energy for recreation or regeneration. So ATP is an important part. Yes. Yeah. So, like, is it like? Uh, am I right by thinking that we have a? Do we have a finite amount of ATP that kind of like uh, degenerates throughout time, and that's why we sort of age and whatever? Right, that yeah, yeah. So mitochondria. Uh, deplete in ATP production as we age. So uh, aging of the mitochondria it has been uh, one, one of the reasons why they say we age. And there's other reasons we age. Uh, you know, chromosomes get shorter every time the cells divide. And so there's a lot of different reasons why we age. But um, regenerative medicine it doesn't stop you from aging, but it, it, it'll, it'll, uh, you know, it'll recreate worn out parts of the body might call it so anything that's been damaged or worn out just by you know, the number of years you've lived or by putting yourself into you know various exercises or sports so you're trying to recreate that so what would be an example of like regenerative medicine like what, what kind of things can you actually do to like slow down the aging process yes. if you will um, so there's a few things we do um, that's the commonest uh, not the commonest but the the first treatment that evolved in regenerative medicine was prolotherapy or proliferative therapy where it was Dr. Hackett in, in America 1960s what he did was he took hypertonic glucose and he injected it into the joints yeah. and he realized that um, when he did that because it was hypertonic so it by osmosis it, it drew all the all the good cells like stem cells and platelets and they migrated to that area that was worn out and and he was able to recreate the, those damaged cartilages yeah, right. so that's how I think that was the first treatment he did. So we do prolotherapy. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a big advocate of prolotherapy because inflammation is what heals. So yeah. that's a new concept. Uh, when you're inflamed in a tissue, it's good because that's going to uh, uh, get the attention of your healing cells, which are stem cells and platelets, and they're going to migrate to that area and heal those those worn out muscles or ligaments. Um, so we do not advocate use of anti-inflammatory medications yeah. like you know, Voltaren or um, Diclofenac, I should say, not Voltaren, uh, and, and uh, Ibuprofen. Um, what prolotherapy does, which is hypertonic glucose will be injected, it causes inflammation, causes osmosis, uh, because it's so viscous, it's so hypertonic, it'll draw all the, all the good cells there, so the, the, pain, the pain gets worse for 36 hours, and then as the stem cells and platelets get there, it gets better. So you tell a patient that after the injection of sugar or dextrose, you are not supposed to take anti-inflammatories because you'll be uh, obstructing the the healing the mechanism. Yeah. So is that would that be more to sort of draw the healing cells in maybe areas of the body that there's not so much blood flow or That's that right. it like wouldn't usually reach. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. Um, so tendons and ligaments. They are relatively avascular. When you when you look at a cadaver, when you do a dissection in med medical school, you see tendons, ligaments are white in color. Muscles are red in color. And yeah. uh, the reason they're white is because they're hardly getting any blood supply. Yeah. Hence, you get often get people in your uh, industry as well as ours. Is you know they have back pain and back pain keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Never gets better. And they keep popping anti-inflammatory drugs. Yeah, right. Uh, or you get cartilage that's worn out and has a few arthroscopy. And, and, the, and then the cartilage keeps getting worse and more worn out and to the point that it gets worn on bone and they have to replace the joint. Yeah. Um, so those areas do not get enough blood um, to heal those areas. So when you put dextrose in there, you create an environment because of osmosis, it get the blood to come in there and fix it. Wow. So it works 
quite well for lower back pains, for neck pains, for migraines, people who get migraines from a, a facet joint arthritis in the, in the facet joints of the spine. So you can inject uh, sugar into those uh, little uh, into the capsule of the of the facet joint and uh, and heal and regenerate cartilage there. Wow! Isn't it funny? It just shows how inflammatory sugar can be, and that's yeah. in everyone's food all the time. That's right. Know? That's right. So that it, on a very like on a different scale, is, do you think that's why there's so much like um, uh, so many health problems right now because sugar is in everything that people are eating all yes. the time. Yes. But it is anything can cause inflammation to come to a deep part of your, your body That's and you're right. eating this all the time, jeez. Yep, it's, um, you know, when you, when you have sugar all the time, it does the same damage to your collagen like, like smoking does. Um, yeah. um, you know, you can lose your collagen from eating too much sugar all the time. Wow. I know the other day that we were talking about, um, uh, in, is it in the, the visceral fat is where um, the stem cell, a lot of stem cells are held, That's is right. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. So when you break, when you fast, you release those stem cells in the body and hence you get younger. And so that's where like a lot of their sort of like um, anti-aging benefits from say like this right. really fasting. Yeah. Like, I, there was a guy that I did a prolonged fasting with um, not so long ago and his skin literally, I remember saying to him, you look like, you're like Benjamin Button, he's going back in years, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, his, yeah. his skin completely cleared to the point where he looked like he's had a filter on, he's getting younger and younger wow. by the day. So, um, yeah, incredible. And the second tip now uh, we do is platelet-rich plasma, which is the more, you know, new generation um, uh, regenerative treatment. So we take the blood, um, we spin it, we get the platelets out, and those platelets are then activated in LED light ch chambers, and then they are injected into areas that need healing. So it could be back ligaments, could be um, uh, the neck, cervical spine, could be your rotator cuff. Um, yeah, could be right. could be tennis elbow, could be your wrist problems, arthritis of the finger joints, uh, wherever you need healings, you just put those platelets right in there. So this is a step ahead of prolotherapy. Prolotherapy, you're putting sugar to cause inflammation and gather body's own platelets to go yes. or stem cells to go uh, into that area. In this case, we've already drawn the blood and done that work for you. So, uh, so you inject those cells, ready-made cells, into the areas that. They would have never reached. For example, if someone had a back injury, torn, torn ligaments, they would have never gotten those cells to go there because there's yeah. not enough blood supply. We are doing that process by injecting them right where they're required. Rotator cuff. Rotator cuff. We do all the time. That's so common, and, and there's a, it's a good recovery rate from rotator cuff. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. You get 20, 10 to 20 percent improvement after every injection. Um, I could name about 20 people off the top of my head that need this right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some, some them, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, so that's the, the, the and you don't, and the good thing about PRP is, or platelet-rich plasma is, you do not go through that two days or 36 hours of intense inflammation and, you know, pain or worsening of symptoms before you get to the Yeah, right. It's quite, a, quite immediate effect with platelet. Unbelievable. That's incredible. <laughs> See, I'm going to have to bring you on a weekly basis. It's good for me to learn as well. Like, yeah, yeah. And there is another thing. I thought there was one more. Yeah, that was it. it's, yeah. called, it's called the microfat transfer. Um, it is the fat we get out of the adipose tissue, which is the fat under the skin from the from person's belly. And, and then it is injected into bigger joints. So this cannot be injected into a small place or tendon or ligament. It has to be a knee, a hip, or a shoulder joint, sometimes ankle joints. Um, so when so arthritis is of four grades: grade one, two, three, and four. Yep. Grade one, two, PRP or prolotherapy works. It recreates the worn-out cartilage. Grade three, sometimes PRP works well, sometimes it doesn't. But grade four, PRP doesn't work. It's just bone on bone. There's no cartilage left at all. Yeah, so right. hence the name. In grade four, um, it's just hardly any space between the two bones. Um, in that case, we take the fat out of the belly. Uh, it is it is then treated in house and then injected back into the area that needs um, recreation of cartilage. Now this fat has stem cells, so it is pretty much stem yeah. cell therapy. It's um, and those stem cells start making um, uh, cartilage or meniscus. Uh, wow. Repair the meniscus. Because it's stem cells are like um, just so clear, anyone that's watching them might not know, but also um, like for myself. <laughs> Um, stem cells, is, is it like almost, say, like a like the fetal version of cell, like it can create cells? It can create That's cells, right. yeah. They can change into whatever is lacking, so they can remodel wow. themselves into whatever cells are required. For example, it's a torn meniscus, you put some stem cells there, it will re 
generate the meniscal cells, or if it's a worn out cartilage, it's bone on bone, it'll create the cartilage. So they do their job. You can't, you can't tell them what to do, they know what to do. Wow, because I know that um, when um, my partner Sienna, or my wife Sienna, so say, um, when we're having our children, we did delayed core clamping, because like, once the placenta is born, then like, that's when the stem cells get triggered to come up through the um, umbilical cord. So I remember feeling it, and you could feel the pulse there, and then it would stop pulsing, and that's when you cut it. Ah, and right. if you did, if you cut it before that, you literally like I, I would have missed stem cells because right. in my day and age, they just cut straight away yeah, before it's it yeah. birth. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So these are the few treatments. Um, PRP can also be used for erectile dysfunction. Now, uh, it's very common in most men over the age of forty. Uh, the erections get weaker after the age of 40 and uh, there's a lot of reasons why that happens. It could be lack of testosterone uh, and it could be lack uh, or, or it could be the vessels in the penis are not accommodating enough blood. They're not expanding like they used to be. Vessel walls are not as supple as they used to be. Yeah. Um, so PRP can recreate new blood vessels by a process called angiogenesis. So if you inject it into the penis, um, you get new blood vessels growing. So that's, that's another treatment on offer. Wow. It's incredible what they can do now. You've got like half of Darwin running towards your clinic now after that last one. <laughs> well, thanks again, man. I love it when you come over here because it gives me an opportunity to learn, you know? So, Dr. Sapir, Ageless Clinic, Regenerative uh, Medicine. So, if you guys are interested in anything like, uh, like this, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go to their website and contact them. But um, as you see, this guy uh, advocates and knows his stuff. So, um, uh, I, I think if I can convince him to come back another time, um, give us any, any questions or comments, either message through to Evolve or on this, so that we can um, ask Dr. Sapir and make it more regular thing. So, um, thanks again, buddy. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.